Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about how I've ditched Azure pipelines <laughs> for my uh, CI purposes. Um, you may have known from a previous video that I used Azure pipelines and I specifically said I was using it instead of GitHub Actions, uh, but we're now running this one back. Um, for those of you that don't know, Azure Pipelines and GitHub Actions have exactly the same backend. They're run by the same you know, servers, essentially, when uh, Microsoft bought GitHub. Uh, GitHub Actions was you know, updated to use the Azure Pipelines backend. So they use the same sort of virtual machines. And the main difference between the two is how you write your pipelines. Uh, they both use YAML. They both use very similar syntaxes. They both you know, include actions in a way, they have jobs and templates and workflows, etc. cetera. Um, and I was previously making my own set of Azure Pipeline templates. Uh, these allowed me to reduce code duplication pretty significantly, and they were really great for you know, managing lots and lots of repos. I have, I've lost count at this point, somewhere around like 60 repositories, and I want them to all function essentially the same, plus or minus a few small details. And Azure Pipeline templates allowed me to do that really easily and have them be versioned. And so in order for GitHub Actions to do that for me, I need the same thing. Uh, the other thing about, uh, yeah, spoiler sign, <laughs> remove that. Um, so the, the nice thing about having a reusable pipeline is I can basically say, I'm gonna include my templates and then pass a few parameters and it'll generate a bunch of CI code for me. And I really only have to worry about this little interface. Now this is you know, a little bit extra boilerplate, but for the most part, it's just run the job template. And GitHub Actions has a similar concept called, uh, I believe they're called workflow templates. There's also custom actions, which solve a similar purpose, but for individual steps. Uh, but workflow templates is, is kind of the uh, replacement for this feature. Now, for better or worse, Azure Pipelines has a lot of nice features in their job templates that don't exist in GitHub Actions. Let me show you a few of them and were the main reason why <laughs> it was hard to do this in the first place. Uh, let's not look at that one. Let's look at this one, which is really the only workflow template that I was using, mostly the only one I ported over. Okay, so uh, previously, and this is <laughs> this is perhaps the biggest glaring gross part about GitHub Actions is there's no way to take parameters as structured data. We'll see how we work around this a little bit later. Azure Pipelines lets you pass lists, dictionaries, you know, whatever, whatever structured data that you want. In uh, GitHub Actions, currently it only allows Booleans and strings. And I think you can also pass null, um, but it's basically just Booleans and strings, which <laughs> can't do nice things like, you know, lists of strings or maps of strings. Uh, but I'll show you. I'll show you how we work around that. It's a little bit gross, but I'll show you how we work around that later. Uh, the other thing that GitHub Actions doesn't have a replacement for is loops. So Azure Pipelines has this specialized syntax that lets you write loops and expand out your YAML, sort of like a templating language. Uh, it's a little bit wild how this works. This is actually just a string key, and the you know, YAML engine that Azure Pipelines has developed will expand this out to a whole bunch of, you know, basically repeating this over and over. Uh, there's also, you know, if statements that allow you to expand stuff out too. Uh, this isn't supported in GitHub Actions either, but this is less important. You can kind of write an if expression instead of sort of an if statement. Although there aren't statements in YAML, it's all declarative anyway. So it's, you know, <laughs> hacking statements into a declarative language. The other thing that wasn't uh, provided in GitHub Actions is a way to expand a dictionary. If you're familiar with Python, this is kind of like a dictionary splat here. Basically, this is a key value, you know, variable name, value, variable name, value, et cetera, et cetera. And this magical insert thing expands this out to a whole bunch of key values here. Uh, GitHub Actions doesn't have an equivalent for this either. And so I had to come up with a solution to replace this. But the biggest thing, and perhaps the hardest part of making this happen, is Azure Pipelines allows you to inject steps into your job, whereas GitHub Actions does not. There isn't a good way to uh, add steps. Now, little asterisk here, because I have figured out a way to make this work, and I'm gonna show you that later. Uh, but that's most of the difficulties and why it was hard for me to port over to GitHub Actions uh, while still being on Azure Pipelines. 
Now, I will reiterate the downsides of Azure Pipelines and things that I was dealing with, but you know, I was receiving this benefit, but of course there was always trade-offs. We are making decisions. Uh, the biggest downside to Azure Pipelines is it was difficult to set up. Uh, I say difficult, you had to click about 10 or 15 times anytime you wanted to add a repository to Azure Pipelines. Whereas with GitHub Actions, you basically just add the GitHub Actions YAML and it works fine. And it works fine for you and it works fine for people that fork your repositories. That was the other annoying thing with Azure Pipelines. If someone else wanted to run my CI, they also had to set up Azure Pipelines, which a little bit of friction there. Uh, there were also a few minor things like, you know, the UI was a little bit clunky. Uh, logging in often put me into a login loop. And there was that one time that, you know, Microsoft showed my phone number on stream to all of my 100 plus viewers that now have my cell phone number, which is not great. But, uh, you know, GitHub Actions doesn't have that problem because you're already logged into GitHub. Um, but yeah, so I have replaced all of this with reusable GitHub workflows and actions. There are a few GitHub actions. And I wanna show you the basis for how you would make this yourself or how you would build something else like this. And then we'll go into the more nuanced details and how I replaced the features that were impossible in GitHub actions. So uh, the first thing is how uh, reusable workflows work in GitHub actions. And for those, you define a GitHub workflow in the same way that you would before, but instead you define this on workflow call. This is how you can make a reusable workflow. It can take inputs. Again, like before, we can take strings or Booleans and no other type here. <laughs> and you might see already my specialized hack for taking structured data, which is to take a string of JSON. This is probably the grossest part of this. And GitHub employees, if you're watching this, please, please, please let us have structured data. It would make this, this grossness completely go away. Um, this is probably the grossest part of, of the whole thing. But anyway, you can take strings and Booleans and you can use those to template out your workflow. Now there's no templating. You can use uh, expressions, things like if, et cetera, and you know, basically specify out a step. Uh, so for instance, here is the name of this step. Now this is also using a little trick here because uh, there's no ternary in the GitHub Actions expression language, but you can kind of hack your own ternary together using Boolean expression. And uh, this is what you'll see if it's true. And this is what you'll see if it's false. So you can kind of hack your ternary together using and and or. Um, so that you'll see this pattern throughout the rest of these templates. Uh, the other thing, you know, the, the other end of that <laughs> little JSON string hack is there is a from JSON function inside the GitHub Actions templating language. And so you can use this to, you know, sp spread out a matrix. So here we're building a list for the different EMVs and building a list for the different architectures. And so you can build out a matrix from this. Uh, there are other techniques as well. You can make your own pre-job that generates JSON and then this could consume it. So I could instead, you know, this could be a comma separated string instead of, you know, JSON and I could have a preprocessor that turns the commas into, into JSON, but this was simple enough. Uh, there's also no split in the action uh, meta language. So again, GitHub employees, split would be really nice. There's a join, but not a split. Uh, if I had split, you know, I probably wouldn't be doing uh, stringy JSON, I would probably have a comma separated list instead. Um, but then beyond that, it's mostly just, you know, writing out if expressions. Again, this is kind of replacing the, uh, the if statements that we had here. I now have if expressions that are looking at the, the talks environment and selecting what Python to use, et cetera, et cetera, you know, defaulting to 311. Um, what else? We can do conditions based on what environment we have. So like Python 3.12, I want to provision the nightly version using dead snakes. That's the same as what I was doing in Azure Pipelines as well. Uh, and I want to show you the hack that allows me to get rid of the other magic that was in Azure Pipelines. And it really comes down to these two lines here. Now you might ask, uh, where does this dot github slash action slash pretest come from? And the answer is this comes from the repository that's being tested and not from the workflow uh, repository itself. And so 
basically what, I, what I've allowed here is if you need to do special stuff before tests run, you define a reusable action inside your work, inside your repository. And this will sort of use that reusable action as a hook to do special setup. So this could you know, set environment variables, do custom installation, you know, all the stuff that I was doing in pretest steps or environment variable steps before in Azure Pipelines. And I, <laughs> I came up with this idea as I was falling asleep. Uh, the original idea was actually to uh, take a YAML string. You know, we already have JSON strings. Let's put a YAML string in here instead and write out a file for a GitHub action and then call the file that was written out. That was the first idea. But then I realized that I could just access these actions directly in the repository. I also get the benefit that if I have a linter for GitHub actions, you know, it's just a normal GitHub action on disk. And so we can check all the same things that it would check previously if you were to write your own custom GitHub action. Uh, and so this is kind of the plugin point that I use for running actions. It's a little bit special. Uh, I'm also using <laughs> another trick here, which is GitHub provides a hash files function. And if the file doesn't exist, hash files will return the empty string. And so I can use that to check whether the action exists before running it. Uh, the first version of this, I hit a Boolean and just used the Boolean instead, but this allows it to do it automatically rather than having to both create the file and pass along the Boolean. Uh, beyond that, it's mostly just the same as the Azure Pipelines template was before. You know, install setup tools, virtual MTalks, talks, run the talks environment that it's supposed to, build wheels if it needs to, and upload those wheels if it needs to. Now, you will note one thing that I did leave behind in this migration, which is coverage. And this is a little unfortunate. Um, I could use a coverage service like CodeCov. Uh, Azure Pipelines had coverage built in, which was pretty nice. Uh, but I kind of realized that if I write tests, I tend to always have 100% coverage, and I'm already enforcing that I have 100% coverage. So the fancy little badge in my README is really just vanity, and uh, don't need that vanity anymore. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, the tests are going to fail if it's not 100% coverage anyway, so why bother? Uh, I do at some point want to build a coverage system because, you know, the badges, they're, they're kind of cool, but at the same time, like, yeah. Get 100% coverage, then don't care about it after that. Uh, so that is one thing that I left behind. Now, I wanted to show you how this reusable workflow gets used and also kind of my most complicated case and, and <laughs> some other tricks that I used as well in that. Uh, so this is kind of a normal case for how I would reuse this action. So this is in ASD Pretty, which is, you've probably seen this on the channel before. I use this as my little demo project a lot. Uh, I'm basically building a GitHub action. I still have the same set of triggers that I used before. These are the same as the Azure Pipelines one, just ported to the GitHub action syntax. Uh, there is a subtlety here. I have selected on push and I make it only do tags and branches with a particular name. This name is to allow me to test GitHub actions in case I'm you know, mucking around with something and I don't want to open a pull request. And uh, this branch filter is also specific so that it doesn't double run everything. Uh, if I just did push, anything and pull request anything, then anytime I pushed a branch to my own repo, I would get two sets of action runs. And you know, I did the same thing in action pipelines. This is also a little bit of a weird YAML syntax. You'll probably be like, wait, this, this doesn't have a value. It's just key with, with nothing. Uh, so YAML has another quirk where if you have a key and no value, this value is null. So this is actually tags null and pull request null. And GitHub Actions interprets that as all tags and all pull requests, which is kind of nice. And then finally, this is the call to the, the workflow template. Uh, basically, you specify the repository, the path within the repository, and then the version that you want to use. And you could use a you know 40 character hash if you wanted to as well. Um, I trust myself, so I'm going to just use the tags here. Uh, and then you pass along you know the variables that you need. Again, we have that gross JSON string, but whatever. <laughs> Trade-offs. Um, I'd rather put all of my eggs into one basket rather than maintaining, what was I up to, three or four CI systems at this point? Let's see, I had Azure Pipelines. I still have one straggler stuck on AppVare. I had some GitHub Actions and, of course, Pregnant CI, but I'm always happy to use Pregnant CI. Okay, so this is the simple case. Uh, the more complex case involves defining this custom GitHub Actions pretest. I'm going to show you two examples here. Oh, I didn't open the other one, but we'll open the other one in a second. Uh, this is for Oniguruma's CFFI, which is a binding for a regex engine. 
uh, that's used in my text editor. And this is uh, a CFFI library, so it needs to have the thing that it's binding to installed ahead of time. Uh, that was, that's kind of the custom setup that needs to happen here. It's not just a normal project. It needs to have that, that additional binary available. And so I basically defined a custom composite action. This is a reusable action that allows you to have a series of steps. There's kind of three types of actions right now. There's JavaScript-based actions, which you write JavaScript code and it runs that, Docker-based actions where it runs a container, and composite, which allows you to compose a whole bunch of other actions. And you'll see that I'm able to put things into environment variables. I'm able to run other actions. So for instance, this is caching the output of the built third-party dependency. Um, I can specify whatever key I'm using here. I can do stuff based on what operating system I'm running on, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you know, this is basically, here's the Mac OS version. Here's the Linux version. Here's the, the also Mac OS. Here's the Windows version. And so I'm able to do conditional steps before anything ever runs. This is kind of my plugin point. Now, there is a little trick here. You'll notice this looks a little bit suspicious. So my GitHub action has inputs, and you'll notice if I look at the caller over here, test, if I look at the caller here, I'm not passing any inputs to this at all. Uh, but I do have inputs here. There is a subtlety in GitHub actions, and I hope this doesn't break. This is probably the most fragile part of this. Uh, Anytime you define an input that has a default, GitHub Actions will evaluate the default value in the parent context. So matrix makes no sense in a standalone uh, GitHub action, but, <laughs> but it will inherit the matrix from this job here. So that's kind of the, uh, it's a little bit action at a distance, but it was simple enough to make this work. Uh, now I could derive this value in a different way. Like I can know what architecture the Python that's running was installed with, and I wouldn't need to do this. This was just way simpler than trying to ask the Python, so what is your architecture? Um, so that's kind of the, <laughs> the little, little hack here. Uh, and I also wanted to show you the other complicated one. I had a few simple ones, which were basically just install Ruby. Uh, and that's like a one line action and not too complicated. Uh, Pregmits is, much more complicated because it needs to set up a bunch of different programming languages so that pre-commit can test all of those different languages. Uh, and it also has custom setup based on whether it's Windows or not. Um, and so I had to, again, also reuse this, this M fear. Oh, pre-commit also has another thing, which is it tests against the latest version of Git, but that's super slow. So it only does it for one of the jobs. And so that's why I need the M fear. Uh, but you can see, on Windows, I need to shorten the temp, I need to set up Conda, set up Perl and Dart and you know whatever other programming languages I need. On Linux, I need a similar thing. I need to set up Lua, uh, Corsair, Corsier, Corsier, Corsier? I don't know, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, and then finally, I need to set up the latest version of Git. Uh, but that allows me to select based on the environment, again, using that same matrix hack here. And also, you know, I could derive the Python version by asking what Python version it is instead of using this uh, little inputs hack, but this was convenient, so I did it that way. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I switched from Azure Pipelines to GitHub Actions. In summary, I have set up a workflows, reusable workflow call uh, repository. Uh, most of my reasons for switching are convenience. You know, it's easier for people to fork my repositories and run the, run the jobs. Also convenience for myself, it's easier to set these up and just commit the YAML file to my repository uh, and reducing the amount of CI services that I have to keep inside my brain. Uh, you know, all the stuff that I do for work and all the stuff that I do for my private repos is all in GitHub Actions. And so Azure Pipelines was kind of my, my special snowflake and you know, a lot of clicks to set up anytime I had to set things up. Um, but yeah, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, maybe this will inspire you to also make reusable workflows or reusable actions. Uh, I find them pretty convenient to have you know, version CI code. Uh, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.